Yo, what's up YouTube? Back with another video. And today, I'm going to be talking about the Denver Broncos versus Tennessee Titans Week 1 matchup. So recently, I'd say seven days ago, last Friday, we had 500 subs. And this Friday, we have over 600. 100 subs in a week. Can't thank you guys enough for all the support. And we really do appreciate everything that you guys have done for this channel, for it to grow everything so thanks for all that let's get into the video so the tennessee titans and the denver broncos i thought both of these teams in the beginning of 2019 were just going to be another you know average team but at the end of the season i believe the broncos and the titans were the two hottest teams at the end obviously the titans starting two and three or two and four they made the playoffs with a 9-7 record made the afc championship game it was a hard task to win that game against the Chiefs, the Super Bowl champs, but they did beat the number one seed Ravens and the Patriots on the road. So this team was on fire. We also do have the Denver Broncos, a team that started Joe Flacco last year, and it just it wasn't looking good. But at the end of the season with Drew Locke in as quarterback, winning four out of five of the last games, this Denver Broncos team finished with a seven and nine record and was absolutely on fire at the end of the season, just like the Titans, which is why I think this is gonna be a very good game. So these two teams played each other in 2019 and it was an absolute embarrassment for the Tennessee Titans. I believe it was probably the worst game that they played in 2019. It was Ryan Tannehill's first start after Marcus Mariota wasn't playing to his expectations. And Tannehill, dude, I don't believe he scored a touchdown that game. It was a horrible game for the Titans, but after that, the Titans lit up and they won so many games with the help of Derrick Henry. Yes, Derrick Henry, a top 10 player in the NFL, debatably one of the best running backs in the league. And this dude carried the Titans. But are we going to see a same similar outcome as last year in 2019, where the Tennessee Titans offense is going to struggle against this Broncos defense? Let's find out. So usually I'd probably start about talking about both of the teams' as defenses, but I think it's appropriate to do that last because I believe this game is going to be a defensive game. Whichever team performs better defensively is definitely going to win. Obviously, this game is in Denver in the Broncos. They have a very good home record. They It's hard to play in the Denver as a road team. And teams struggle. The Tennessee Titans did struggle last year, but that was in the beginning of the season. We're gonna have to see if this is a different result. Sometimes good teams even lose to a bad Broncos team because it's just hard to play there. And that could be the case in this game. But I think starting with the offenses because I think both of these offenses are pretty good and whichever defense probably plays better, it's gonna win. That's definitely up to interpretation because you know, the Broncos offense is an established bot. It has good players. And the Tennessee Titans D offense, obviously, it has been established, so we're going to have to see what happens. But starting with the Tennessee Titans offense, with obviously quarterback Ryan Tannehill, who absolutely turned this team's season over with, you know, winning games, beating good teams, making the playoffs, all because of Tannehill's outstanding performances. But I believe Derrick Henry, when he lit it up, it was unstoppable. If Derrick Henry is having a good game, you might as well just kiss your wishes goodbye. It's over. You know, Derrick Henry is a monster. And if he plays good, it's over, obviously. But if Henry's not playing good, it could lead to disastrous outcomes and potentially even losing the game just because of one player. We did see that Derrick Henry, uh, when he lit it up at the end of the season, this team started winning, 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 and scoring high amounts of points in games. This offense was terrific. And we saw Derrick Henry play the Patriots and the Ravens, getting around 200 rushing yards each of those games. And that's why they won against the Patriots and the Ravens. But when Derrick Henry played the Chiefs in the AC Championship game, he did not have a good game, and either did the offense, which is a big key factor because the Denver Broncos defense is obviously really good. I wouldn't say it's the best defense in the NFL, but it has very good players like I'll talk about that later, but these players are good, and that's why I think this is a defensive game. So if Derrick Henry's lighting it up, it's over. But if he's not, is Tannehill good enough to win the game for them? Well, let's look at the receivers. They got, uh, I thought, the best rookie wide receiver last year, A.J. Brown. 
I believe he had the most receiving yards. This dude played very good. He had many screens, I believe, and he had over a thousand plus receiving yards. They also have wide receiver Corey Davis, which I wouldn't say is better than AJ Brown, but he's definitely, you know, a good performing receiver for this team. He definitely did not have the best season last year, but he did good enough, which I, I don't know. If Corey Davis played better, this team's offense would overall be better. But also with Adam Humphreys, another receiver for this offense, mainly AJ Brown though. So their other best receiver, I guess you could say, is their tight end, Jonu Smith, who I believe lit up against the Patriots and the Ravens and scored touchdowns in the red zone for this team. So that is a key, important, you know, player for them, their tight end, Jonu Smith. But along with that, with their best, the Bailey best player on their team, probably second best, Taylor Lewan, their left tackle, who creates very, very good pockets for Derrick Henry to just destroy so this offense is pretty good. Overall too, this team's offensive line, including the guards and tackles, center, they're all good players, which is why Derrick Henry, you know, he gets the room to run, which is why the Titans offense was good last season. But it's all up to Tannehill if they do good. Looking at the Broncos offense, on the other hand, this team has so many rookie, I mean, I, I wanna say rookie, but it has so much young talent that it could surprise all of us this season. And I believe they drafted very well. So they got Drew Locke, his sophomore season's coming up. Like I said, he won four out of the five of the games he started at the end of the season, losing to the Chiefs, which is expected. Drew Locke was playing good for this team, and he definitely turned it around, just like how Tannehill turned the Titans around. And they got Melvin Gordon from the Chargers in the offseason, along with Philip Lindsay, two good running backs. Melvin Gordon's gonna be a starter, and Melvin Gordon could have a great season. He is very underappreciated in my opinion. He had very great stats in 2018, Melvin Gordon did, and so did Philip Lindsay as a rookie. So we're gonna have to see what happens, but this running game, I believe it's gonna be pretty good for them. Their wide receivers though, that's where I like this team. That's why this team is smart. The Broncos traded away Emmanuel Sanders to the 49ers in the middle of the season. And I thought that was a pretty good trade, whatever. But it showed that Cortland Sutton became the star receiver on this team. And he had very good stats for this team after Emmanuel Sanders was traded. Along with him, they drafted a good rookie receiver in the first round, Jerry Judy, who I believe could have a good season. We're going to have to see. I believe he's going to be a top three wide receiver, rookie wide receiver, I should say, in the NFL Next year, I think CeeDee Lamb and Henry Ruggs III are going to be the only two better receivers, rookie receivers, next season. Jerry Judy could have a big impact on his passing game. And I thought the draft of KJ Hamill, second round wide receiver from Penn State, I believe that was a very, very good draft pick. Because I, I would know. KJ Hamill went to Penn State. I go to Penn State. I watched the games he played in last year. I believe that he was second in college football in receiving yards at one point. This dude was a sophomore when he um, went to the draft, a sophomore. So this dude has potential in the league. It's a good receiver for them. Obviously, tight end, no fan. He was another one of those players that was drafted in 2019 as a rookie. He's a very good tight end and very underappreciated in the NFL. I believe this dude could be the next Travis Kelsey in the future but definitely not this year. He's still gonna have a good season. It's a good offense for the Broncos. So this team does have potential. And week one, like I said, they host a game. So that could be a deciding factor. But let's look at these defenses first. Starting with the Broncos defense, they have good players. And I wouldn't say it's the best in the NFL, but this defense has potential to be better than it was last season. It probably will be. Um, obviously, they have one of the best players in the league, Von Miller, linebacker. He's won Defensive Player of the Year, I believe. He won a Super Bowl MVP. This dude is a great linebacker for this team. Obviously, they have Bradley Chubb, who was lighting it up, but got injured. If Bradley Chubb didn't get injured last year, which I believe he did, his stats would have been amazing. As a rookie, his stats were good. Very good, I should say. He's a sack monster. And if Bradley Chubb can stay healthy this entire season, the linebackers for this team, they're going to be disgustingly good. So that's a key factor. And that's why that could, you know, affect Derrick Henry's running game. The linebackers could stop him. 
if, you know, he gets past the defensive line. And even if these players like Derrick Henry are going to rush outside, it could be an easy tackle, maybe for a loss of yards. So that could be a key factor in this game. Von Miller, Bradley Chubb versus Derrick Henry. But the Titans offense, like I said, they have good receivers. A.J. Brown, who I believe is going to be the best sophomore next season, and Corey Davis. The good receivers there are going to be facing up against this Broncos secondary, their corners, and their safeties. A really good pickup by the Broncos defense was A.J. Boye, a cornerback from the Jacksonville Jaguars. I believe that he was a Pro Bowler in 2017 and was playing very good. I just remember that because I remember the Jaguars stomping on the Steelers twice in 2017. A.J. Boye with a good defense, this dude's going to play good. He has the talent because Justin Simmons is a good player, a free safety for this team, along with Kareem Jackson and Bryce Callahan. With Justin Simmons and A.J. Boye, um, A.J. Boye added with these two players in the secondary, their secondary is going to be decently good and it's not going to be bad. So overall, this defense is decent. So if these players play like they have in the past, like the Pro Bowlers they are, the secondary could upset the Titans offense, their passing game. Uh, you know, covering A.J. Brown is very important in this game. If he doesn't have receptions, this team could lose. If Derrick Henry doesn't run the ball, this team could lose. Those are very, very important key matchups to look out for. But we have to look at the Tennessee Titans defense. So in 2019 in the playoffs, this defense was playing phenomenally, I believe. They were playing like they couldn't lose a game. And I wouldn't say it's because of the talent, but I would say it's because they have good players and they were hyped up at the end of the season. They have decent players on this defense, and I wouldn't say it's the best defense in the NFL, but we saw in the playoffs what happened. The Patriots offense, I wouldn't say it's that good, but they beat the Patriots because of the defense. Only because of the defense and Derrick Henry, of course. And against the Ravens. The Ravens, they got destroyed by Derrick Henry, but we also got to consider that the Ravens only scored 12 points in that game, and it's because of the Tennessee Titans defense. So if this defense plays good against the Broncos offense, that could be a key factor in this game. But the question is, will it play good? So let's look at these players. So starting with the linebackers with Rashawn Evans, and most importantly, Jayon Brown. Could get to Melvin Gordon, Phillip Lindsay. We're going to have to see a loss of yards, sacks. They're important for this Tennessee Titans defense. So the important factor of this game, I guess you could say the defensive line, if it has a good game, Drew Locke is not going to have any passing yards. But I wouldn't say the Titans defensive line is the best, but we saw in the playoffs, it was outstanding against Lamar Jackson and Tom Brady. But you look at the secondary, strong safety, Kenny Vaccaro, um, I wouldn't say he's the best on the team, he's decent, but Adoree Jackson, a cornerback for this team, and one of the best players on this team, free safety, Kevin Bayard. Sorry if I mispronounced that. But this team's secondary is good, with, along with the cornerback, Malcolm Butler, a former Patriot, had a couple interceptions last season. Kevin Bayard had a lot of interceptions. So this defense is good. I want to say it's top five. But also, I would say it's top ten. So if this defense plays good against Melvin Gordon, Drew Locke, Cortland Sutton, KJ Hamler, all of the most important players on this team. It could be an upset. So, as you can see, both of these teams, they look pretty even. Obviously, the Tennessee Titans, I believe, are better. But we're going to have to see who wins this game. So, um, better defense? I don't know. Better offense? Probably the Titans. Obviously, the Titans. But this game is in Denver. If this game was in Tennessee... No question who wins it, but it's not. Denver is a hard place to play, and that's why I'm picking the Denver Broncos to win this game. I believe the Tennessee Titans are better than the Denver Broncos. It's just the fact that we saw what happened last year. Obviously, it was Tannehill's first game. It was earlier in the season. Derrick Henry, you know, he wasn't lighting up like he was at the end. It was midseason. And the, the Broncos destroyed the Titans at home. And the Broncos weren't even good in the middle of the season either. So, is that going to happen again? I think, no, it's not. 
but I also believe the Broncos should win this game. I just feel like it's one of those matchups where, you know, a team's better than the other. I think the Titans are better, but it's just, you know, one of those matchups where the Titans just won't win. It's just one of their counters. Maybe the Broncos defense just absolutely outperforms the Tennessee Titans offense, and that's all that matters in this game. While it's going to be different, the Titans are going to be in this game. They're going to score high. But the Broncos, you know, they got home field advantage, which I think is the only deciding factor in this game. What I believe is going to happen, let's say it's fourth quarter, you know, Drew Locke, I believe the Broncos are probably winning this game fourth quarter. Tannehill's down by a touchdown, maybe six points. All they have to do is score a touchdown and an extra point they win. Have the ball, Derrick Henry, he gets stuffed. Tannehill throws to AJ Brown for like three yards, boom. And it's over, fourth down, what happens? They go for it, they rush the ball, Derrick Henry is stopped, game over. And I only say this because I believe the Broncos offense is gonna play good. It's at home, they have talented players. So, what do you think is gonna happen? Who do you think is gonna win this game? It's gonna be an interesting one. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, adios.